Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look, thank you for joining us in our Bible study. And we will start with a song and go into prayer and offer our lesson for today. How many of you remember this song? Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. If you know it, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. All the day long, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. All the day long, perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior, I'm happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let's give God some praise. Amen, amen. May we pray. Eternal Father, we want to give you all the praises and all the glory. You're worthy. You're worthy, O oh Lord. You're worthy. Gracious Father, we give you thanks this hour. We give you thanks on this day. Some of our trials and tribulations have, have been very taxing and added burdens and stress in our lives. But yet we know, O oh Lord, that you are a great and awesome God. Gracious Father, we come before you right now asking that you will reveal your word to us and to help us to be the people that you've called us to be. I ask, O oh Lord, that you will use me and use us in this time of sharing your word, in the name of Christ we pray, amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I want to call our attention to uh, two scriptures today and allow me to make a few announcements. Um, as a pastor, I know we, we teach the word, but we also share a couple of thoughts regarding community. The three things we'll share with you right now is make sure that you're registered to vote. And uh, we need everyone to participate in the process and not just be complainers. Uh, vote uh, your conscience. May your voice be heard through your vote. Uh, secondly, make sure you feel out the census as we think about uh, being counted uh, among the, the, the statistics and any no other way to put it so that when the census goes forth, it really impacts how tax dollars are being using our various communities and if you want to count that's one way of making it count and then lastly make sure that you're exercising uh, social distancing wearing your mask 
and things of that nature to protect yourself and those that are around us. Uh, if you would, may we look at Exodus chapter 20, verse 4, if you will write it down, as well as Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. As you take a moment to write that down and, and to uh, uh, have the scriptures in place, we do want to remind you that our Bible study since last week started with a three-prone focus, a pastoral focus for uh, the Carter Church. But at the same time, if you are joining us, uh, what we are teaching will benefit you as a person, your family, as well as uh, your endeavors in life. We started last week by introducing what we are calling three V's for the next 12 months. It's our vision focus. And the vision focus is this. The first V is vision. The second V is virtual. The third V is victory. Last week with the first V when it comes to vision, we talked about in Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18 that without a vision, people perish. If we stay within the confines of the context of the church, if individuals are in declining situations, or as we hear folks say, not only in our denomination, but uh, Protestant churches, and for that matter, I understand Catholics as well, although we're not teaching Catholicism. But when it comes to congregational life, many places are in decline, and I would like to say, according to the word, is largely due to a lack or no vision. No vision. So if you are a pastor or a leader of a church or a group, you need to know that if you don't have a vision from the Lord, that you're definitely subject to decline as well as deterioration and perhaps even death. That's not my word. Again, Proverbs 29, 18 says, without a vision, people perish. And that's his word. The other thing that we uh, want to move to from vision is to virtual. Right now, we're in a time where uh, virtual life has become a common life, not just for the work environment or for a set group of folk who are tech savvy or work in the profession of computers or digital, however you want to put it. Right now, everyone has been greatly impacted by what we call what is virtual. And if I can just offer my thoughts about defining what is virtual, and it's not from an expert standpoint, it's just from a leadership standpoint, hoping that those who are listening, if, if, you, if you are not a tech savvy person, that you're grabbing a handle of some of the things that we're thinking about. Now, you may see me glance over to the, to the right or left or whatever your viewing may be because I have my computer and my scriptures on it at this time. Now, when I think of virtual, and we live in a world where things are virtual around us all the time. I think of what we envision or what we think or what we believe. Now, I'm not talking about faith from a biblical and spiritual side, not yet. And I'm not talking about technology. When I think of virtual, we are envisioning something that is real, but maybe not tangible in the sense of being real. It's something that you can see but not necessarily in person. Now, I'm not trying to speak philosophical. I'm just thinking about just day-to-day -day life for those of us that engage things that are virtually. Uh, what is virtual helps us to see, to envision, to experience, to communicate, but not a, uh, in an in-person way. So when we hear these words virtual, right now we link them to what may be online or social media or things that are digital. It's a way to help us to keep up and to stay informed and to remain relevant. It also helps us to maintain our relationships and create new relationships. So if you're not a person who believes that being virtual is important or a part of your life, guess what? It's time to wake up. Um, being virtual is a part of our everyday life now. And we won't be able to escape or avoid that. So it's better to learn as much as we can so that we can use these tools and things that we have access to 
to the best of our ability. Now, when I think of virtual, not only from a defined a definition standpoint, here again, virtual is being able to envision and to think things and see things, although they may not be in person. Well, there are two mediums, and I'm not talking about platforms, but if I can just break it down this way. Things that are virtual uh, are known through technology and also through our mind. Technology can come through whether we want to talk about a flat screen television or computer, a, lap, a laptop, or a tablet, a smartphone. Um, when we think about the mind, I'm thinking about how we imagine things. So technology as we know it right now, we're, we're largely talking about computer devices and whatever connectivity we have online. When we speak of being virtual in the sense of image or imagining things, I'm just thinking about the mind excluding technology. So there's a bad side to things that are virtual and a good side to things that are virtual. Let's talk about the bad side first. Look at Exodus chapter 20, verse 4. Now, of course, this is a time, a day and time where technology, or at least the way we understand technology, is not in existence, but we still have to think about the mind, whether it be technology or imagining things, that without the mind, none of it exists. So when we talk about virtual, we need you to envision what things will be, should be, and can be. Now, what happened with Israel and their relationship with Moses, they began to envision some things that they ought not to have been envisioning, but they followed through on that anyway. Exodus 20 verse 4 says this, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Now, when we think of a graven image, and of course we're talking about um, Israel taking material items and forming calves or forming golden images that eventually they worship, which is in verse 5. But, but, but we want to deal with the imaginary part, the image part, the, 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 the thought that how you see something in your mind uh, that's real in one way but then in another way, it's not tangible yet. But when they began to envision and God told them not to make it, they made it anyway. And then he said, not anything in heaven or on the earth or beneath the earth or in the water under the earth. Now, check this out. This is real interesting. When I think of the heavens above or the sky, we have placed satellites in the atmosphere. When I think of the earth, I think about telephone poles or underground um, cable lines or the means of transferring information. And then I was listening to NPR uh, some weeks back where they talked about the communication cable lines that are underneath the oceans and waters that really connect the continents to be able to communicate in that way. And when you think about it and how we have misuse uh, these tools that are in the atmosphere uh, and also on the earth and under the earth and under the ocean, there's good and evil taking place even in those vehicles, if we can call them, uh, uh, or devices. And the, the tragedy with anything that comes by way of image or imagination or even virtually is when we use it to worship the thing rather than the creator of all things. And that brings us to verse 5. Thou shalt not bow thyself, bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Now, some people may read this and feel that it's being stretched to some degree, but I beg to differ. 
I think many of these things that we have created virtually, that some of us will fall into a trap and begin to worship. What do I mean by this? The things that we have, technology, computers, uh, whatever the device may be, is a tool. It is not a thing to be worshipped. It is an item that gives us access, but not where it ought to control our lives. For example, my son, like all of our children, uh, is on the computer, tablets, video games, smartphone. His smartphone is in a place right now that I can see it. He can't keep a smartphone in his room. It's just that simple. His computer game is not in his room. It's just that simple. Be and he has a time limit only based upon two if he has completed his work. But guess what? That's not only for him. I have to do the same thing myself. My computers don't come in my bedroom to stay. Now, they may come in for a moment if me and my wife are trying to share space. Everybody's at home. But my computer has to be in the office on the desk put up. My smartphone, I don't even keep right next to my bed. And most of the time I keep it on silent and I keep it face down. The only time I need to respond to it or deal with it is when I have it face up. And I don't like carrying it in my pocket. It, it's just something about technology. And I'm not a, against technology by no means. I'm learning and have been using. In fact, uh, the computer program I got right now on my laptop that I've been using for my Bible is software and information I've been using for well over 20 some plus years. So by no means am I against technology. What I'm saying is when we create these, uh, have these images and create things and begin to worship them, then we're misusing uh, things that God uh, allows us to have and using against him. So when it comes to things virtual, use your devices, but be careful of idol worship and making these things your gods. Let's look at Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. If you look at Colossians chapter 3, verse 10, it says this. And have put on the new man or the new person which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Let's look at this passage in three ways. And of course, I'm looking at the King James Version. And have put on the new person. That's the first thing. Which is renewed in knowledge after the image. That's the second thing. And then the other part to this is after the image of him that created him, who is God our Heavenly Father. When we think of, of virtual, we're really envisioning how we can have a life in relationship with Jesus Christ in a life that is not counterproductive as we live with one another. I know it's an interesting way to look at virtual. We, we, we shifted from the image or the physical piece and the technology piece now to the mind and the image piece to say that, that those of us who are in church are thinking so much about preparing ourselves technologically when we're not preparing ourselves from a virtual sense, mentally and spiritually. It's, it's, it's like a two-sided coin. There's a tangible part and an intangible part. We have many people that are talking about how to prepare people to come inside of the physical facility during the time of COVID or after COVID is over with. And we spent less time preparing people spiritually and mentally for who they need to be even before they come back to church because church will never be the same. And that's why we're talking about virtual now, vision and the virtual. Church will not only be in person, but it also has to have some virtual understanding of what church will look like. So when we think about putting on the new person, the question is, what will you look like? Who will you look like? How do you envision, how do you internalize things virtually to be that person that God will have you to be? Notice he said, put it on. 
The second thing Paul said, which is renewed in knowledge. Where do you get this knowledge from to be who you need to be? Well, right now, those of us who are using technology are doing everything we can. Uh, social media, whether it be Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, emails, websites, the list goes on and on. Look, no matter what the platform is, the word of God has not changed, if you get what I'm saying. Whether it's in a book form or you're getting it on your smartphone, the word of God is still God's word. And when we talk about renewed and knowledge, that renewal that you need and I need has to come from somewhere. I have to read this word every day. Every day. I eat every day, except for when fasting. And even during times of fasting, we have to cut back. So if you want to be renewed, then you must take time to read and study God's word really daily. Daily. And then the context of all of this being made new and and being renewed in knowledge is after the image of him that created him, meaning God. So if we are to envision who we are to be, then we need to have a relationship with God that helps us to understand who he has called and chosen us to be, the kind of lifestyle that he will have us to live. Some people believe that uh, we can live any kind of lifestyle and because, um, because we are Christians that it ought to be okay to accept anything. Now, I don't agree with that. Um, true enough, God loves us all, but at the same time, it does not mean that God agrees with all the lifestyles that we have. We're constant works, and no, we're not being judgmental. We still have to be taught. We just don't say because th people point things out about folk and ourselves that somehow we let ourselves off the hook. No, if I'm teaching on sin, that's not the situation we're teaching on right now, but, but if I'm teaching on sin, I know that that applies to me also. But to those of us who are leaders, we have a responsibility to teach. And all of this, uh, if somebody teaches as though they're being judgmental, no, that's that's not it. If a teacher's in the classroom and, and somebody's behavior is, is out of whack or not where it needs to be and they're corrected or whether that's on the job and they're outside policy, yeah, that, there has to be some teaching about lifestyles and things that that uh, cause us to lead down the wrong path. But But on the other hand, if we are teaching from a judgmental standpoint or a condemning standpoint, we don't have that kind of authority. We don't have that kind of power to condemn who will go to heaven and who will go to hell. That's God's work. But as believers, we need to teach so we can point things out for people to see. It's their choice about how they're going to live and what they're going to do. And uh, But the teacher must still teach. Well, look, I hope that by presenting... Uh, the aspect on what is virtual. Of course, we're going to get some more concrete items over the week. But right now, we're just introducing the concept about three V's, vision, virtual, and also what it means uh, to have victory, especially in this season. May we pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for this day and this time. And what is virtual is all around us. Right now, our school systems are struggling with whether or not to have in-person and or virtual, and our young people are suffering because of it. It's not anybody's fault. We're just right now in a very uh, serious time where leaders are having difficulty making decisions. But virtual is here to stay. I hope and pray that whether it be school or whether it be church in our homes or wherever we may be our work, that we learn to use virtual not to worship, but to give you glory, to use it as a tool, we pray now, Lord, that you will be with us the remainder of this day, and we thank you for life, health, and strength. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, look, have a great day. Continue to join us at www.cartametroftw.com, and we thank you for your support and being a part of our ministries. Take care. Have a great day.